welcome to my site code diaries your ultimate guide to digital experience excellence your go to channel for all the things in site core and dot net so this is the uh, video from the site core headlight jss series and we are exploring jss architecture today we are going to see graphql I'm your host Jitendra Ghanekar. I'm in Sitecore Technology MVP 2024. I have given all my social media handles on the screen. You can follow me. Uh, you can subscribe to you, our YouTube channel. If you have any question, you can send me those uh, questions on my uh, Gmail ID. So till now we have seen the renderings. Uh, the different layout services, uh, layout service, dictionary service, uh, basically a REST API. So today we are going to see a GraphQL. So what we are going to see in this video, we'll see uh, what is GraphQL. We'll see history of a GraphQL and what exactly a GraphQL is. Then at high level, we'll see how GraphQL works. Then the difference between the REST API and the GraphQL and the finally how we can set up the graphql in this site code so this is just an introductory or you can say a summary a summary of a graphql we are not going in detail uh, in this video we are just uh, want to i just want to introduce you what is graphql and why it is used in the uh, our architecture so what is graphql GraphQL is a query language for a your API and a server-side runtime for executing queries using a type system you define for your data. So GraphQL is a powerful query language uh, for used for your API and it offers a server-side runtime that executes queries using a type system defined by your data. So you your data uh, 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 this type system is defined by your data so it's it's like a query language okay so you are writing you are, it's like you are querying the data okay in the graphql so you basically write a query in the graphql origin and history uh, graphql was developed by facebook and released as an open source project in 2015 so it is it is developed by facebook and it is there since 2015 Database flexibility. This is a key thing in the GraphQL. GraphQL isn't tied to any specific database or storage engine and is nested back by your existing code and data. So unlike the traditional APIs, GraphQL isn't tied to any specific database or any storage storage engine. Instead, it works seamlessly with your existing code and data. Creating a GraphQL service. A GraphQL service is created by defining types and fields on those types, then providing function for each field on each type. So creating a GraphQL service involves uh, defining types and fields and then providing the functions for each fields and on each type. GraphQL versus REST, we are going to see in detail the GraphQL versus uh, REST. Uh, Unlike the REST which opens requires multiple requests to fetch a related data, a GraphQL allows client to request exactly the data they need in a single query. Sidecore plus GraphQL. So in Sidecore, GraphQL can be used only in a connected mode. We have already seen what is connected mode, what is disconnected mode. So GraphQL can be used only in a connected mode. Sidecore implemented GraphQL server on top of the Sidecore product to support uh, the uses of Sidecore GraphQL. So it is built on top of a content search API. Okay. So Sidecore provides this uh, feature where you can utilize the GraphQL. So let us dive into how Sitecore implements the GraphQL to manage and access your data efficiently. The process starts with the client, which could be any application that needs to be interact with Sitecore data. The client send a query, which is a request for a specific data. Next, we have a schemas. It's the blueprint of your data. Schema specifies the structure of your data and type of queries that can be performed. 
in other words they tell graphql what data is available and how it can be fetched so that is defined by schema then uh, in addition to querying a data the client can also modify data through what we call as a mutations mutations defines the way your data gets changed so mutations are responsible for defining how your data gets changed such as creating updating or deleting any records so mutation defines the way your data gets changed and then there is a very important uh, component in the graphql that is the a resolver the core logic for fetching or mute, uh, mutating data is handled by resolver this basically defines how your data is retrieved from the store so this function takes the client query or a mutation interact with the underlying database so you can have any database so you can have any external database and side core case you can have a side core database okay so it interacts with the underlying database and return requested data in the appropriate format and that appropriate format is a json so it returns the json data back to the client to summarize side core implementation of a graphql allows a precise querying and efficient data management the client sends a query a schema defines the data structure mutation manages the data changes and resolve fetch data from the connected database so resolver fetches the uh, data from the connected database so this is how the uh, graphql work at high level so we are going to explore the key difference between the rest api and graphql let's start uh, with query flexibility REST API fixed endpoint for different resources may require some multiple requests. Whereas Sitecore GraphQL flexible queries with a single point end, a single endpoint request exactly the data needed. So if you talk about the REST API, typically it uses a fixed endpoint for a different resources. For example, you might have a separate endpoints for fetching user data the user post or user comment so you have a different different you you might have a different different endpoints to get all this data this can mean making a multiple request to get all the related information needed but in case of graphql it uses a single endpoint and allows you to request exactly the data you need you can crap a flexible queries to fetch nested data or requested entities in one go so you need to write your queries you such that it will give you all the data that is related to user data so example which we talked user data post or comment in case of rest api you have a three different endpoint but in this case we have to in the graphql case you have to write a query flexible query which can retrieve user data post and comment all together in one call only this eliminates the need for a multiple request and reduces over fetching or under fetching of a data so whatever the data which is required the exactly the exact data which you needed that you can get from the graphql whereas rest api will have a fixed response we will get all the all the data which is there in the response whether you need it or not needed it doesn't matter you have to have to consume that and then you have to use it as per your logic this is the first uh, major difference in the rest api and the graphql next up is the data retrieval a REST API requires a multiple request for related data, a fixed response format, retrieves a nested or related data in a single request, dynamic response based on the query. I have already explained this with the first point only that you might need a multiple request to get a related data in case of REST API, but GraphQL you need to write your query which will give you a dynamic response. Now let's talk about the schema and type safety. No built-in schema for REST API response structure defined by endpoint implementation. In case of Sidecar GraphQL, strongly typed schema, so schema serves as a documentation and validation. So when you talked about the REST API, REST API don't have any built-in schema. The structure and types of the responses are determined by each endpoint implementation. And this can make it harder to understand and predict the data structure. You can have a different uh, data structure as per your endpoint. 
but when you talk about the graphql it is used it uses a strongly typed schema to define the available data types and their relationship this schema acts as a uh, contract and serve as a documentation and the validation so making it easier to work with the uh, the it make it easy to work and it will ensures the consistency also that is a major difference with schema and the type set moving on to versioning manage through rest api manage through a url paths or a header so you can have a different uh, urls like api slash version 1 slash version 2 like that that requires a version updates whereas there is no explicit versioning schema changes are managed dynamically in sidecar graphql so rest api it often handles a versioning through a url path or headers uh, like the example I have given in this on the screen uh, when there is a changes are made the new version need to be introduced which can lead to a backward compatibility issue uh, and maintenance also overhead but in case of GraphQL it does not require any explicit versioning instead schema changes are managed dynamically as long as the schema remains compatible with the client can continue to use it without needing to adjust for a new versions let's cover real-time update in case of a rest api no built-in support for real-time updates requires a polling or additional mechanism to do this sidecore graphql uh, supports a subscription for real uh, real-time update so if you talk about the traditional rest api they don't have built-in support for real-time updates so to get the latest data you might need to implement a polling or any any other mechanism which will allow you to get the latest data in case of a graphql it supports subscription so you allows uh, your client to receive a real-time updates whenever there is a data change okay this provide a more dynamic and responsive user experience without the need of uh, any constant polling okay so this is one of the difference between the rest api and site for graphql and if you talk about the last point here tooling and integration uh rest api is supported by the uh, traditional http clients and libraries whereas the graphql is supported by graphql and other graphql tools it's integrate with the graphql clients like uh, apollo so those are the tools which can be used so this is a high level difference between the graph api rest api and the graphql api okay how to set up your graphql inside code so there is a when you install the headless uh, package you will have one configuration file in your service.graphql that is this graphql.contain.master there might be a web config also okay so let's uh, if you, you mostly you will work on the development part so you will be uh, making a changes in this master.config so this is how all the things in this uh, uh, config file but it is not enabled it's dot example so you have to copy this and you can create uh, uh, you can create as per your standard practice j.sql folder inside the include and paste it there and enable it by removing the dot example and then uh, there is another file that is sitecode.oint.authentication.config okay so that file has one node called site hyper neutral path so you need to make a changes in that okay so where will you find this uh, file uh, sitecode.oint.authentication.config so it will be app underscore config sitecore oint.authentication sitecore.oint.authentication.config now you can add your patch also for this or you can add the uh, this file itself the in you can find the site neutral path and inside that you can add these beside code slash api slash graph items node underneath it okay so once you do this you save it then you can access your query graphql query is like this your domain site code slash api slash graph slash items master question mark query and here you can have your graphql query also it provides the uh, graphql tool also okay so maybe we will talk about that later so it's a simple uh, changes which we can do i will try to have one uh, demo of this okay not now but maybe later stages we will will try to have set up the uh, show this how it works okay in the site code all right we are done for today 
if you are liking this series the headless series please please watch all the videos and do uh, provide your feedback via the comment to click on a like button and upload this video uh, the all the videos in this series and to share this with your uh, friends and colleagues who want to understand who want to learn the sitecore headless concept till now if you are not subscribed to the channel then i will request you to subscribe to the channel and click on a notification bell to get a latest update thank you thanks for watching